Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Arsenal career mode on FC 25. In this episode, we're playing against City in the league, and we should also find out who will be playing in the knockout stages of the Champions League. Here, we've got the playoffs, effectively, so we've managed to avoid an extra couple of games. We've got... Um, Oh, who's Bergamo again? Is that Atal it's Atalanta? At oh, I can't speak. Atalanta against Bayern Munich. You've then got Feyenoord against Dortmund. Stuttgart against Atletico Madrid. Juventus against Villa. Bologna against Leipzig. Club Bruges against Celtic. Leverkusen, PSG. And then Girona against Lille. So those are the playoffs. If I could pick one of these winners to play against, it would probably be Feyenoord. Although, actually, a Celtic game would be quite cool, wouldn't it? I wouldn't mind playing Girona again. I thought they were a little bit underwhelming. But either way, it is now time to get into that game against City. They are slowly but surely climbing the table a little bit now. Two points behind Spurs there. I'm obviously one point behind Liverpool still. So um, I cannot afford to drop points here. I thought whilst we're in this area of the menu, let's have a look at our objectives. So we're, of course, waiting to potentially use the youth development a little bit more, the, the youth academy a little bit more in a different series. I actually hate it as it is right now. I don't hate the system. I hate how the players look. They all look like little girls. It's weird. Um, <laughs> so I don't think I'll be doing that. But brand exposure, done. Both of those finished. We signed four players in, in January and um, two of them um, first teamers. Well, no, not really first teamers, but they probably will be at some point. But all, all of them were born in Europe, I think. Yeah. Um, financial, probably not going to be able to do that because we haven't signed three crucial players. All of those players are kind of rotation or just important. Domestically, we're going to have to wait until the end of the season and then Continental the same. So we'll see how we get on with those. I think we can win the title. I really do. But the Champions League, that's going to be tough. I'd like some feedback from you guys now. I'm trying to work out my favourite and my best 11, and I think this is it. And you're probably thinking Ben White should be in there. I don't know, guys. I love Ben White, but I just don't think, at least in the final third, he's anywhere near as good as Timber. Timber feels ridiculously good in this game. He really does. So what I'm going to do for now is just stick Timber in at right back. That's going to be his position for a while. And let's see how we get on. I think every other position picks itself. I think Martinelli and Trossard obviously are fighting for that left wing position. But Martinelli got a hat trick recently. He has had a very, very good last four or five months. The start was a little bit iffy. Calafuri at left back, really enjoying him there. Can't touch that midfield three. Havertz has to be the striker. Gabriel, Saliba and Raya have to be in there. So it's just right back and left wing. So let me know who you think should be starting. For now, I'm going to go Martinelli and Timber. Here we go, guys. Arsenal against City. Hopefully no red cards in this one, eh? That would be nice. We've got De Bruyne and Erdegaard leading the teams out. Two incredible players. Honestly... Man for man, this this is difficult to pick a combined 11. I think you literally will end up going half and half. What is my combined 11? I think Edison probably just edges it for me longevity-wise. He's been such a good player for so long. I think Raya's definitely up there, though. And then right back, you probably go Kyle Walker. Then you go Saliba and Diaz, maybe. Then left back, Gvardiol, I guess. And then going into midfield, it's got to be Erdegaard, De Bruyne and Rodri. How does Rice not get in? Oh. And then I'd probably go Saka, Haaland, Doku. I don't know. Again, maybe you guys can let me know what your combined 11 would be. But it's, it's definitely a tricky one. And it just shows how far we've come. We've got so many players that could effectively get into a combined 11 with City. Five seasons ago, four seasons ago, three seasons ago, maybe none of them would have got in. Wow, De Bruyne, we're two minutes in. Do you mind? <laughs> Already needing Raya there. They're going to go short. Oh, Foden's got to get in somehow as well, hasn't he? Yeah, that's a really, really tough task to pick a combined 11. 
This is not good, though. Carl Walker up against Rice. Don't get sent off. Don't give away a penalty. We don't want any of that. De Bruyne with the cross. And I think he might have been offside. Yeah, he was. We've got Erdegaard out wide here. I'm going to give it to Declan Rice. Wait, Rodri hasn't even started for them. What? Is he injured? <laughs> Havertz in the box. Oh, not bad. A right-footed cross from Erdegaard. You don't see that very often. Uh-oh, that's not good. Timber's got to catch up to Grealish here. And he has done... Oh, my God, that was beautiful. See, I just don't think I can do that with Ben White so easily. He's just a little bit slower. De Bruyne with the shot. Raya's there again. I gave De Bruyne way too much space. I'm really struggling here, guys. Really struggling. City are all over me. De Bruyne again. Well done, Saliba. Right, let's get forward and actually do something. Saka. Oh, look at Martinelli. Good ball. Really good ball. Havertz. Please be onside. He was off. I should have held the left trigger and done like a volley anyway. That would have been way better than a header. Oh, my God. Gondolan, what a ball to Grealish. Oh, no. Foden now. Saliba's there again. What would I do without Saliba, honestly? He's so good. Now here's Saka into Havertz. We have to build this up a little bit more slowly. Oh, why did I just turn into De Bruyne? I just need a bit of relief, please. Right, we've got it again. Let's turn with Martinelli. Walker isn't as quick in this year's game. What is it, 89 pace now? Slowly but surely going down in pace as he gets older. Which is nice because he's been ridiculous over the years. Erdegaard now. Havertz. Turn. Over the top for Martinelli. Oh, it's Marino. Hello. Cross coming in. Havertz. Erdegaard. Oh, Edison's there again. It's another good save. Almost 40 minutes in now. Corner comes in. Gabriel's there. Oh, and we've scored! Just like he did at the Etihad in real life. He's done it at the Emirates. It's 1-0. And now we just get to half time without conceding. That would be ideal. This is completely against the run of play. I should not be winning this game right now. But I will gladly accept it. Thank you very much. We are dangerous from corners just like we are in real life. Oh my god, Saliba. Hello. What a ball to Martinelli, that is. Back on the outside. Oh, Walker just got sold. Marino. Oh, Saka. No way. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Two chances, two goals in quick succession. And it's a lucky rebound. I really wanted Marino's shot to go in, though. I mean, it was on target. It had to be saved. But he's parried it right into the path of lethal Bukayo Saka just a moment before half time here. And as I said before, City have been dominant. They don't deserve to be losing. And it's 2 0. Grealish getting forward. Timbers there. Nice. Hoof the ball out. And that is half time. Oh, glorious. <laughs> It could have been three right away in this second half. I feel like I could maybe get lucky again and just blow them away. God, imagine like a huge 3-4-0 win against City. Oh, I can dream, right? Oh, no. Foden's in. Don't give it to Haaland. Just take the shot yourself. Oh, no. Give it to Haaland, mate. <laughs> oh, that is... That's the best finish of the day so far. His weaker right foot as well. He just banged it into the top left corner. Yeah, in off the bar. And then basically full side netting on the inside as well. Just <laughs> unbelievable goal from Foden. And I kind of expected this. I knew this would be a very tough second half. I was definitely dreaming of an early goal to make it 3-0. But that isn't the case. I'm making some changes now. And I'm going to focus my play down the left. I've got... Two fresh legs coming on. Well, technically, that's four fresh legs, right? <laughs> Hato and Trossard. I'm also wondering if maybe someone like Timber could come on here and beef up the midfield a little bit more and have a bit of stamina in there. I think 
Rice, Marino and Erdegaard is such a good balance, but sometimes you just need something a little bit different and I'm just going to go for it. Marino is coming out. So focus down that left side. That is where I'm going to hurt them now. Remember what I said about the Timber Twins now? One wears blue, one wears red. Boots, I mean, obviously. <laughs> They're not going to be wearing different kits. So now you should be able to see who is who. Well done, Hatto. That was nicely done. We've probably got 10 minutes, including injury time left. I've got to really focus here. Get tackling. Nice. Just defend, defend, and then hit them on the break if we can. Trossard over the top from Hatto. He should get there ahead of Walker. Nicely done. Saka's made a good run. Oh, Edison came off his line. That's fine. Just waste a bit of time. Keep it up in their half, and they won't be able to score. I'll take that. Oh, wow, Saliba. That was um, acrobatic, wasn't it? Trossard. Over on the right side here for Timber. He's had a great game. He really has. Justifying his selection ahead of Ben White today. Saka. Oh, his trademark cross. Oh! Trossard should be making that 3-1. They're taking off Walker and bringing on... Who's number 20? Isn't that Bernardo Silva? So I'm guessing they've shifted to three at the back here. As they go for an equaliser. They've lost the ball again here. Born Erdegaard. Over the top. Oh, he's not going to get there. Again, though, we've just wasted a bit of time, and that should be it. It's full time at the Emirates. We've beaten City. Oh, gosh, I hope this happens in real life. That would have been the perfect result at the Etihad as well. In real life, I'm talking, when we can see that that last-minute equaliser from John Stone is so frustrating. But um, we've beaten them here at the Emirates, and uh, it was a really good performance. And just like that, just a couple of weeks into his journey as an Arsenal player, Kenda is now an inside forward plus. So we are probably, what, two weeks away from plus plus? <laughs> it's broken, isn't it? It happens very quickly. He is now very, very good at inside forward. Remember, one plus is basically um accomplish you know very good at that role and then plus plus is world class i still think there should be a limit on that i really believe that plus plus should be only when you're 85 rated plus you should have to be 85 rated or something to get it but hey it's in the game i'm going to use it he will be he already is a lethal lethal inside forward for us but that is now done um progress on wanieri it's slow it really is 129 weeks I'm just going to tell you now, guys, as soon as mods are available, I'm just going to change his position. Even if his rating goes down, I don't care. It can go down by one or two ratings. I just want him to be in position. So hopefully you guys don't mind me doing that when mods are available. Any other updates? Timber, five weeks away from being converted to right back. I'm not actually changing Hato to centre back, but I'm making sure he can play the role at a high level. His defending and physical will be going up. You can't see that. Hang on. There you go. So you can see his stats are going up nicely there. Um, Calafiori, I'm waiting for his pace to go up a little bit more. And then I'll be going into false back for him. That's the plan. Zinchenko is almost a centre mid, although I think I'm probably going to be selling him. Jorginho and Partey both will be leaving, I think, in the summer as well, or at least one of them. Any other plans that I'm working on right now? Not really, to be honest. So um, I'm very happy with how the squad is doing right now. But um, some some things obviously are still in the works. Um, investing in our youth development represents an important target. Yeah, I know. I know. But EA really need to update the uh, the design of the, the players, the way they look. It, look, it, it might sound stupid, but I have a thing. I've had a thing for years. The players need to look somewhat realistic. You, you know, I hated generic faces. That's been fixed to some extent with Cranium, but the youth players look awful. I'm glad they don't have beards and stuff like that at 14 anymore, but they literally look like little eight-year-old girls. It's just weird. It's super weird. So I'm probably not going to be using the Youth Academy until they make those changes in November, is what I've been told. They've, they've worked out what's wrong. They've admitted it themselves. There's too many feminine features being used. And it's not really a problem if you don't mind it, but I do mind it. But anyway, what I'm going to do now, guys, is jump into highlights because we've got a few games coming up that um, 
I don't... I, basically, I, I want to make some progress here. I don't want to be in season one forever. Um, where am I? I'm trying to go to the calendar here. Think, Matt. Wake up. So I'm probably going to finish the rest of this month in this episode. We've got two cup games. We've got Leicester, West Ham and Nottingham Forest. And then um, we'll come back and hopefully by then we'll know who we've got in the Champions League as well. In our first game at this beautiful stadium at the carpet, it's an EFL Cup game and it's against Doncaster, I believe. Um, I am. A, this is a day later, so I'm having to think back a little bit. Yes, it is Doncaster. We've already played them once. This is the second leg. And look at this. We've got Havertz and Kenda both starting. It is 3-1 on aggregate, as you can see in the top left there. And we almost make it 4-1 in just 13 minutes. Kenda probably should have scored that. And then Trossard should probably score that as well. At this point, I'm just thinking we are going to decimate them. Here is Kenda again inside to Havertz. Over to Trossard, who's surely onside. Nope. Let's have a look at this replay. I'm fairly certain this is going to be close. And I think maybe this would be okay in real life because it's kind of shoulder area. But then again, I think I just saw his kneecaps were slightly offside. But there you go. It was close, but he didn't score it anyway. But finally, into injury time in the first half. We do get that fourth goal to make it 4-1 on aggregate. And it's Kenda again. This kid cannot stop scoring. He's the next Saka. Now, I've got a quick, quick question for you guys whilst we sim to the end of this one. How would you feel if I made Kenda a little bit taller when he's 18? Because he's so small and I'm fed up with having these small players that just never grow. So let me know down below. As you can see there, Liverpool have beaten Wolves 4-1 as, as well. But um, if I made him one inch taller next season with mods, let me know your thoughts on that. Because of course, he's going to grow. He's 17. But anyway, talking of growth, we've got Q Timber here. And he's got play style plus in box to box now. And we are going to remove the cam playmaker one because you can, of course, only have three roles as a plus. So that's that done. Hato has finished his development back into the center back role. I'm not going to convert him, but now he shouldn't get any minus stats when I use him as a center back. And now we are going to switch him over to the false back development until he gets play style plus there or role plus, whatever. Zinchenko has also finished his training. He is now going to be a central midfielder, but I must say he won't be here next season. I'm just kind of doing it for now. And actually, he's gone up to 82 rated, by the way. So he's gone up from 79 to 82, I think it is, which means his value will go up as well. But now up against Fulham, the old Arsenal players here, it's, it's basically a mixture of ex-Arsenal and Arsenal Academy graduates. <laughs> That's who we're playing against. And of course, I'm desperate to get Marino a goal. We, we had a shot there early on. And um, the FA Cup is a competition I really want to do well in. So I was making sure I played well and still put a relatively strong team up. I did rotate a little bit and I'm fairly certain we should have had a penalty there. But here is Jesus starting ahead of Havertz for this one. It's a great shot. Comes crashing off the bar. And now we move on. And it's Marino. And it's a power shot. I don't care if we hit the bar with Jesus. I've now scored with Marino. He has arrived. And I didn't know just how good the power shot would be with him. Goes flying past ex-Arsenal Leno. And here we go again. Oh, and that's what you should expect most times. <laughs> so the power shot was very effective. And then a normal shot, not so much. But we've got that 1-0 lead into the second half here. And Jesus, literally two minutes into this second half, makes it 2-0. It doesn't look like Fulham are going to get through us in this round. Although they do pull one back here about 15 minutes later. Piraeus. Perea, Piraeus? Why am I thinking it might be... I might be saying that wrong. He's a great player. I really like him, by the way. Smith Rowe was nowhere to be seen. He was on the pitch, but barely had a touch in this game, by the way. And Saka on a lovely run there, very close to making it 3-1. I felt like I would really need that third goal. And we finally got it. Captain, leader, legend... Martin Erdegaard. Not quite a legend yet, but maybe soon. So as you know, I went to settle the buy option for Kenda. There's no way I'm letting him go back now. 15 million. And I didn't receive the email saying that he's happy to, you know, go into contract talks. So there is obviously a bug at the moment with career mode. Sometimes emails are not coming through. And as you can see here, I'm not able to make another offer for another week. So it's not the end of the world. It's not like we're going to miss out on him. I was worried for a second that maybe that was it and he wouldn't want to talk again. 
but we will try again. Up next, we have Leicester, a recent game that we had in the Premier League that ended 4-2. It was a stressful game and I really did not fancy one of those games now. And that goalkeeper is going to give me nightmares. <laughs> He's already made one good save and then we've gone 1-0 down. 20 minutes in, I should be 1-0 up, but now we're 1-0 down. But it was a very nice goal, to be fair. That touch to go through Calafiori and Gabriel. And then the chip as well. The audacity. How dare you? We're going to try and get back in this as soon as possible, though. We get very lucky with a few rebounds. And Martinelli does equalise 10 minutes later. And I think you can probably kind of guess what's going to happen here, guys. There's going to be a lot of goals in this game. I don't know what it is. Sometimes it just happens. There's just loads of goals. And here is another one. A very fluky kind of shot that wasn't on target from Rice that ends up right in Havertz's path. I'll take it. Great touch and finish. 2-1. And then just moments later, we give away a penalty. And it's Saliba. He's just sometimes too quick for his own good. Too strong for his own good. And then Daka puts it away. I guess the right direction, but not the right area. I went top left. And he slotted it in the bottom left. So fair play to Leicester. We take kickoff. I can see right in the corner of my eyes, Saka's making a run. We've picked him out beautifully with Erdegaard. And then Havertz made a great run into the box. And that is now the fifth goal in 45 minutes. And I said in real life this was 4-2, right? Could it be 4-2 in the game as well? You're about to find out. Martinelli there. Good save from the keeper. I really did want to get that fourth goal. I felt like I was going to concede. And finally, we did get the fourth goal, 83 minutes in. And it's Marino. It's like, you know, when you open a, like a, a can of Pringles, once you have one, that's it. You can't stop, right? Well, now that Marino scored one, he won't stop. He's going to be scoring every game. <laughs> so we do get a 4-2 win. And back into training and development here, Timber is finally a right back. He doesn't go up in rating. He stays as 80. But now, finally, he can play on that right side. I might add left back as another position as well. We'll see. But I was comparing what the best development plan would be and I settled on attacking wing back. That's going to improve his sprint speed a little bit as well just to make him that little bit quicker. Now, I've been getting some transfer offers. One of the players here, Partey. Manchester United wanted him. I'm going to reject Manchester United. I don't want to strengthen them because Partey is still a good player, by the way. He's good enough for sure. But when Bayern come in, yeah, take him. I'll... I'll I'll happily take extra money as well. So he is most likely going to go to Bayern. I've been having offers in for Zinchenko. And the, I think the offers are slightly higher than they would have been because of the position change. Barcelona wants him. So, of course, I'm going to accept that. And Athletic Bilbao as well. Now, Jorginho, I didn't see these offers because I didn't get the emails. I just happened to check when I saw Partey and Zinchenko's there. So we'll, we'll try and get another offer in for Jorginho soon. But it has been a week and finally we can renegotiate a deal with Giovanni Kenda. Let's see if he's willing to sign a contract and hopefully it won't be too much money. They've of course got no choice but to accept the £15 million uh, settlement fee. So he will be our player for £15 million, which I think is still very cheap, even though I probably could have done it for five or something like that. We've given him the prospect squad role, a five-year deal. And no need for a release clause. And his wage is lower than what he, I think, what I would have expected to give him. I thought he was going to want 30 or so when I last checked, um, you know, when I tried to do it before but forgot the emails. So um, we've actually got a really good deal there. And it is official. Kenda is an Arsenal player permanently. He's no longer on loan. I wasn't sure when I first got him on loan if he was the one. It was kind of just to get me to the end of the season with an extra winger. But come on, guys, you're going to see in this game, I've started him down the left side. He's just too good to not have. But how about that from Erdegaard? Also, similar to Marino, not really scoring a lot this season, but all of a sudden he's bagging loads of goals in. And this, with his right foot, is outrageous, right into that top corner. But West Ham beat us last time. I know what they're capable of. And look at this, though, for beautiful play out from the back. Look at this. Oh, I hope we can finish it with a goal so I can include this as a highlight. <laughs> oh, well, we lost the ball. I'm still going to show you the flicks, the tricks. Oh, beautiful stuff. And here is Kenda. It doesn't matter if you play him on the right or on the left. He still manages to get in on the action. And that is a fantastic finish from the 17-year-old. This is why I've done it, guys. I'm not going to buy Kudus. I'm not going to get Rafinha. I'm not going to go for Bakayoko. I am going to stick with Kenda.
and I'll try my absolute best to get him to that kind of 75, 76, uh, maybe even 77 rating by the end of the season. We will see. 2-0 up, but West Ham are dangerous, as I've already mentioned. And Kudus is, for me, their key player. He misses his first opportunity to score there. It's a good save from Raya, but then he wins the header. 2-1. Squeaky bum time, right? Well, here's Kenda. Explosive run into the box and almost tucks it away into that bottom corner. I'm going to use him on the left every now and again, you know. Very, very impressive out on the left side, just as much as on the right. Some bad news, though. Timber picks up an injury, although he gets up off the off the pitch and then just slams a goal home. Oh, who does that? You've just been injured, mate. Chill. <laughs> he is a ridiculously good midfielder. I'm so, so happy I've signed him. And by the way, mods are here. So in the next few episodes, I should be able to get mods working and maybe I can give him a custom face. That would be awesome. Or maybe just give him Urian's face. Let's, let's literally create the twins. <laughs> and then it's four. Havertz scoring in the last few moments there. I was hoping to get a fifth, but revenge was mine. We've beaten West Ham at home. Good result, that. And here is confirmation of the injury. Thankfully, it is only five days. Timber will be back very shortly. We've been lucky with injuries this season. Nothing too serious, so I'm very happy about that. Thomas Partey for £22.2 .2 million will be joining Bayern at the end of this season for the start of next season, which means the number five shirt will be available next season for a brand new DM potentially. We'll look into it. And now into the next game against Nottingham Forest. And Marino scores again. 20 minutes in. Beautiful stuff. But then they have a chance to equalise. Thankfully, Raya is quick off his line. And now just before half time as well, Marino gives it away. And then Rice gives it away. And then Sosa is through and slots it home. So there is not going to be a clean sheet on the road today. And that is a very tidy finish, to be fair. Late into the second half here. It wasn't a very good game, if I'm honest. And they probably deserve to take the lead. I was not having a good second half at all. But Raya saves the day again. And into the last few moments, Tomiyasu crosses it in. I was hoping we could just volley that home. Here is Erdegaard. And it's just a pretty tame shot. And we just can't afford to be dropping points against Nottingham Forest. I mean, especially with Liverpool right up there. So that was a, a disappointing result. But this is good. Zinchenko did not go to Barcelona. He's gone to Athletic Bilbao. And we get some money for that. And we get Manager of the Month. Get in there. Deserved. 21 matches, 15 wins. Four draws, two losses. Very, very good indeed. And now back into the FA Cup, the Arsenal Cup. It is time for Liverpool and it won't be the last time we play them. We've got them again in a couple of weeks time in the Carabao Cup final. So I'm seeing this as a bit of a warm up in the round of 16 here. We've got Chelsea and City in one of the other legs. And here is my lineup. Hato starting at left back. Quinton Timber back from injury. And here is Liverpool's lineup. It's good, but no Van Dijk, which I thought was interesting. But their most dangerous player Salah. He's the one I want to keep quiet. So what I decided to do six minutes in was just give him a chance. And there you go. He took it. <laughs> We're already 1-0 down at home. And this is one of my favourite fixtures, by the way. I love the Liverpool game at home because it's been so successful for us in recent years. Always a tough game, but we've been able to do it. We've been able to win. And we're off to a terrible start here. But Martinelli's through. Great save there from Kelleher. It won't be the first, by the way. What a second goalkeeper he is. Such a good goalkeeper. And here's Ben White. Trying to wait for a little opportunity. We give it to Saka. I see the run being made, but unfortunately the cross isn't quite good enough and Liverpool will clear their lines. 25 minutes though. Over onto this right side for Saka. Trying to find the equaliser. Almost. Probably isn't a good idea to be crossing into Jesus who got the start again as it is a cup game. Martinelli up here to Timber. Oh my God. Back from injury, back on the score sheet. It's another screamer from him. He is seriously good. I don't even know if I need a DM now because he can actually play there. So if Rice isn't starting, I can just put Timber as, as a DM. Let me know your thoughts down below. And Gabriel almost turning the score around there right before the break. Should have been 2-1. But instead, we're going into the second half here and it is 1-0. And Nunes comes close to making it 2-1 to Liverpool. Here is Tomiyasu playing with Jesus. A nice little one to the volley. And Kelleher is there again. He's having such a good performance. 
Chiesa into Darwin Nunes. There's a gap and he slams it. Oh my God, how's that going in? The replay we get doesn't show particularly well how bad the defending was, but look how close Riot is to saving this. He does get a touch on it, but it's too powerful. 2-1. And I went on all-out attack here and Liverpool could have easily got a couple more towards the end here because of, you know, I'm leaving gaps by pushing so high up the pitch. Nunes could have had a hat-trick in this second half. He probably could have had a hat-trick in the last 10 minutes. So it was a little bit unfortunate that we left it so late, but we might have one last chance. And look who it is. Kende, he's barely got any energy, but the Liverpool players are dead as well. Should have crossed it here, but I've decided to keep running. Bit of skill. Looking for the cutback. Can't find it. We'll try again, and Liverpool just about get it back. And unfortunately, we go crashing out of the Arsenal FA Cup, the Emirates FA Cup. But do you know what? It means we can focus on what we've got left. The Carabao Cup final is soon. Here we're looking at the league. We've only got 11 games to go and we are six points clear. And of course, we've got the Champions League as well. So we'll be focusing on those three tournaments. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, leave a like, make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next one.